You're an ambassador. You're a representative of Christ. And if you represent Christ, you should represent him well. An ambassador of the United States, when they send them to foreign countries, they treat them well with royalty. They are not, if they're going over in some rural area, they are not, they're not on no horse or no camel. They are riding in a limousine or a Cadillac because they represent the United States. They stay in a great big old uh, house, suite, a house, because they represent what? The United States. Just like the United States is over here, they take that same format and put it in the foreign country that you're an ambassador. You ain't running around if you're in some foreign country. You ain't running around. You ain't running around eating squirrel or eating bugs. You're eating chicken steak, right? Because you represent who? You don't represent these people. You represent Christ. See, so you're gonna eat. You're gonna eat the best of the land. The best of the land here in the United States. You ain't eating turtle soup. <laughs> you eating chicken noodle soup. <laughs> you gonna eat well. Why? Because you're a representative of the United States. You are ambassador of Christ. Okay. Now we are ambassador. Our citizenship has what changed. Your citizenship has what? Changed. You are not over here in this old life. See, that's what you got to meditate on. Not just read it, but you got to meditate on it. I'm not over here in this what? Old life. I'm in the new life. So our citizenship has what? Changed. So I live like a king. I no longer act the way I used to act. Like a fool. All right, all right. Everything come along. You know, I'm acting just like the war acts. So, I act like a new citizen that's in the kingdom. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. How many remember the way you used to act before you came into Christ? Do I have any hands? You know how you used to act. And some of y'all probably act the same way because you're kind of Christian. Second Corinthians what? <laughs> but how many know you can change that once you find out who you are. Therefore, if any man or woman be in who? Christ. He is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things what? Come new. So we got to act like the old things have what? Passed away, correct? All things that I used to do because my nature was connected to the enemy. And I used to do old things. I had old habits. Hmm? I used to hang out in places that I had no business hanging out, hmm? like the strip club. Hmm? Ain't nobody in here hanging out in no strip club, man, you know, see naked folks. That might have been your thing. You understand? But you don't supposed to be doing it. You are a new what? Preacher now. You don't supposed to be there. Right? It'd be mighty sad. You understand? They see you on TV. Coming out 
of the strip joint. So that's, I said, now wait a minute, man. And some said, right, hey, go to the church. Don't y'all tell them y'all go here. <laughs> All things have what? Passed away. See, if my nature change, I'm going to change. When I had the nature of the enemy, I did what he told me to do, but now I got the nature of Christ. Psalms 103.12. Let's look at Psalms 103.12. We're still in line with the new creature. Psalms. One hundred three twelve. Let's read it. As far as the east is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions from us. He has removed our rebellious acts as far away from us as the east is from the west. Now he's removed all the rebellious things that we do as far as the what east is what from the west. It tells us how far you always have been removed from you. As far again as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. When Jesus Christ came into your life, he created you to be free from the past, free from negative effects of your family, and liberated from all former hang-ups. In short, we are brand new creatures. So stop claiming or blaming it on your family's genetic problems, genetic problems, or inherited sickness. And you go to the doctor, they ask you what your mother had and what your father had. Hmm? And they try to put it off on you. Amen. Just to say, well, you know, it's going to run on down to you. And your what? Children. It's children. Huh? That's Y'all ever wonder why they ask you that? Hmm? Because it's supposed to be, you're supposed to have the same thing. It's supposed to be a generation of curse. But how many know we've been redeemed from the curse of the law? Just because my mother or my father had heart problems, I don't because I am a new creature. I am a new species. And all things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. My heritage, then I just got through telling you, my heritage has changed. I've been translated where out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So I may what new creation, I'm in the family of God. So as, if I'm in his family, his family never had heart attacks. His family never had cancer. His family never was dysfunctional. So now, stop accepting that. See, stop accepting that when you go to the doctor and they diagnose some type of case on you. My well, your mama had high blood pressure. Well, I don't because I'm in the what? Kingdom of God. I am a what? Son of God. I am a brand new creature. When Jesus came into your life. 
He created you to be free from past, free from negative effects of who? Your family liberated you from all former hang-ups in short, a brand new creature. All hang-ups. Well, my daddy, he's an alcoholic, so you know it's going to follow me. No, I don't have to be. I can be drunk off the Holy Spirit. I'm drinking now. You know what? I'm drinking out of a new bottle. I'm drinking out what you call the new wine. The new wine from what heaven. That's what I'm drinking out of. I'm not drinking in a lower state down here what the devil say I supposed to drink. Just because my daddy was an alcoholic or my mama might have been an alcoholic. I'm into a what? A new kingdom. And they don't drink rot good in heaven. <laughs> so stop laying claim to your family's problems, genetic problems, inherited sickness, dysfunctional behavior. Oh, my brother, you know, he, dad, he was dis dysfunctional. You know, he got plenty of babies around by different women. He was dysfunctional. Well, you dude, you don't have to be there. Huh? You don't have to go around uh, being a stud trying to prove something, trying to prove your manhood, going around from woman to woman and sticking them with babies because you found out that your daddy was like that. No, but I'm not like dad anymore. I'm like not this earthly father. I'm like my heavenly father. So I don't have to be what? Dysfunctional. I'm not under no curse. father he changed you, you, you might have had a father that changed smoked or a mother that changed smoke but you ain't no chimney you not a fireplace because you were made in the likeness and the image of God correct correct <laughs> because you've been deliberated liberated dysfunction behavior disorders hang-ups curses some people got hang-ups don't know who they are fearful thinking folks talking about them got emotional problems and the emotional deficit. You don't have to be that way. Why? Because you are a brand new what? Creature. So stop being that way. But wait. There's so much more that you've been given in Christ Jesus, for instance. Back to Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. How many know God did a work on you? Huh? You are his workmanship. Hmm? He carved you out. And specially formed and made you unto good works. Not to bad works, but what good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now this word here, workmanship, means in the Greek, artfully created. Just like a, a artist creates a picture on the canvas. God did us this way. He took time to draw you and make you like him with no flaws. 
just like a poet. Now this word means one who has extraordinary abilities to write or create a masterpiece. So God created us as his workmanship a masterpiece. He took time. Do y'all hear me? You are a masterpiece. He took time and just created you and formed you and made you a genuine what masterpiece. So now, why are you going to think little of yourself when God took time to do that? Why are you going to go back into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness when God took his time yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. to form you and created you? Made you a new species. Not something made out of the old, but something brand new. Not anything used that he put some alterations on. Not that, but something what? Brand new. And he took his time. You know how a painter, he'll take his time. And some paint paints pictures painted pictures cost millions of dollars and they don't look like nothing. 10 million, 20 million. But the, but the key to it, the reason why these pictures are, are cost so much, the artist took his time and when, you, when they explain what's in the picture, you don't even realize that that was even in the picture. Because the artist, what, took his time. It took, might have took him a year hmm, to take his time to paint certain stripes and certain sceneries and certain trees and things. He took his time. How many know God took his time with us? That's why the scripture said we are wonderful and fearfully made. We not cheap, nothing cheap. You know, when you do a masterpiece, when you become a masterpiece, that means it's skillfully, artfully created in Christ Jesus. There's nothing cheap about you at all. God's creative artist ability and genius went into your making. How many know God is a genius? Hmm? And he don't make no junk. It went into your what? It went into your what? Making. So you got to get this in your mind, your mentality of who you are, and then you won't have no low self-esteem. Simply because you know who you are and who? Christ. You are intelligent, genius. The intelligence of God and his genius went into your making. He took his time. Look how much you've been given in Christ. Don't you think it's time to stop moaning about how dumb, stupid, and ugly, and untalented you feel compared to others? Stop comparing yourself to other people. Compare yourself to who you are in Christ. Sometimes people compare themselves to other people's success. Success of monetary things. Something that you cannot take to the grave. And then you're trying to be like them. You're trying to have this big house, this big car, this thing, all this type of stuff, this, all this education, all this thing like that to try to make you feel good. Honey, that's not going to make you feel good. Because it's, a, because it's a downside to everything that God Gives you. Now, didn't, didn't I say God was a genius? Huh? It's a downside to everything. Hmm? God is not going to let anything take his place. That's why when you buy something, 
When you purchase something, you purchase a new automobile, it's no fulfillment in it. Hmm? It's no fulfillment in things. It's only fulfillment in God. You buy a new automobile, two or three months, it's old, and you want something else. It's a downside. It's no fulfillment in it. Correct? So God, the genius in God, is not going to let you or let anything take his place. That's why he set it up that way. He set it up that way that no matter what you get, there's no fulfillment in it. It's only fulfillment in God. You get a PhD degree, good, well. Huh? Good, you get a PhD, good. Might get a job, get my point. Might do pretty good, you know, getting a little money and things, you understand? But man, they might, till you get up in pride, and you, they might lay you off. See, so it pays to know God, and pays to know who you are, and your position, your position in God. Because nothing that you have, everything that you have, Everything that you get, it's a downside to it. It's no fulfillment there. No. You get the big car, you get the Mercedes Benz, you find out it's a downside to it. And don't know what you're doing, and you're over your head. You got this big S5, you're over your head. They let you have it. You paying six hundred some dollar car note, might be paying eight and nine, right? <laughs> hmm? And you got it used, and your service light come on, and then wanted that they gave you is over with. Then you take it to the Benz dealer. And the Benz dealer tells you it's going to cost you $5,000. You need some engine work, it's going to cost you five grand. That's the downside. See? So now where, where is your head that was in the air? And you're styling, baby. You know, you're styling. And the folks, they point at you, boy, that's... Boy, that, look at man, that dude in a Benz, man, you know. Wet it down. And you're not too happy. So it's a what? It's a downside to everything. You get this big house. You got brand new carpet. You think the carpet going to last forever. Hmm? Then you're in a low flood area, it floods. <laughs> then you find out that the, you find out that you don't have flood insurance. You just got regular insurance. They say, well, you know, uh, miss, you know, we don't pay for that. That's a what? Downside to everything. God is not, not God. The genius of God made it that way. Hmm? Made it that way where you want what? Trust or find fulfillment in anything. Isn't that right? Anything. It's a downside in people. That's right. That's right. Because they might change their mind on you. Huh? You got this nice brother, you understand? He's bringing you flowers and. Oh, you got married. And you, know, and you come to find out, you know, the downside, you know, he, he's romantic, you know, with you and bring your flowers and things. But the downside of it, he might be bringing somebody else some flowers. This rascal, you understand, might be giving somebody else some flowers. You might have a good man, you understand? He, he's, he's, uh, he works, 
all the time. Mm -hmm. He works all the time, but he takes care of the family and all that, but he works all the time. But he might be doing something else. Mm -hmm. He might be paying somebody else's bills. <laughs> so it's a what? It's a downside to everything. Mm -hmm. It's a side effect. To everything. You might have a loving wife, cooks, clean up. Well, you know I'm no respect to puss. I got the brothers, we got to get the we got to get the sister too, right? <laughs> she might be a good wife. Have your food ready. Mm -hmm. House clean. And you know, she, she doesn't work. And then you find out at uh, 12 o'clock in the day, you know, <laughs> she always out somewhere. She might be cooking somebody else's dinner or cleaning somebody else's what house. It's a what? Downside or side effect. And that's the way God made it. See, where well, you won't put your trust in these things that's on the earth. But your relationship it has to be where? In him. 